Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today I'll solve the problem maximum with ramp. And before I even get into this problem, I wanna quickly say something. Imagine that this is like the normal distribution of people watching these videos. From what I know, about half of you guys only care about knowing what the solution is. And then I would say the next like 40% actually wanna know why the solution works. And lastly, we have the 10%, the top 10% who actually care about the intuition to be able to come up with solutions like this in the future. And so of course I'm gonna be covering like these two, but I'm really gonna try to focus on that last 10%, mostly because I enjoy it. And I hope you guys find it helpful. So let's get into it. Suppose we're given an array like this, we want to find the maximum subarray pretty much, and I'll kind of describe what I mean by that, but we want to find the maximum that satisfies two particular conditions. One is that these two pointers, i and j, have to be different, and this pointer has to be less than the other one. And second, the value at that pointer that is less than the other pointer has to be less than or equal to the value at the other pointer. So those are the only two conditions. Now, when I said subarray, that's not entirely correct. Like if this is that subarray, we actually just wanna return the end minus the beginning. So in this case, that would be three, which is the index here, minus one. So we'd get two, which technically is not the length, but it's the length minus one. So I think it's fine to think of it in those terms. So of course, to this solution, there is a brute force solution. You just go with nested loops. So starting here, we wanna find the longest subarray we can create starting here. So we have that I pointer there, J pointer over here, and just keep going, compare the values. This doesn't obviously form a valid subarray. So go here, it does, like the values are less than or equal, so we're good. So we found one that's of length two. So J minus I in this case is two. We'll keep going and we'll find that now there aren't any other values greater than or equal to six. So very important observation to make, even though this is the brute force solution, we're looking only for values greater than or equal to six. If only there was a way we could early determine that there are no more values greater than or equal to six. If only that was the case, we might be able to optimize this solution, but we can't. So now we go to the next position and do the same thing. So I here keep looking for values that are greater than or equal to zero. This one is, this one is, this one is, and this one is as well. So the longest that we could create, I think in this case is four. And at this point, like our brute force solution is gonna keep running. It's gonna try the same thing from here, 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 and here. But can't you kind of tell that, I mean, the longest we could create from here was this, and the longest we can create from here is that we went up until the end of the array. So there's never gonna be a subarray from anywhere in here that's gonna end up being longer than that. So if you're a seasoned leak coder, you probably have heard of the sliding window algorithm. This brute force solution, by the way, was an N squared solution. And it's a pretty simple one. So for a medium problem, we should probably expect that we wanna do better. And the sliding window algorithm, the way we're gonna kinda do it, like I don't know if this is technically the sliding window because like we don't actually care about the window itself. We care more about like the end values. I prefer to think of it in terms of sliding window. Some people prefer to call this the two-pointer approach. I mean, technically sliding window is a two-pointer algorithm, but anyways. By the way, I'm probably gonna gloss over some of the basics. So in case like you wanna learn more about like these fundamental algorithms, sliding window, two-pointer, prefix sums, you might find some of the courses on Neatcode.io helpful. Now, the sliding window algorithm is one that generally runs in linear time. It's a two-pointer algorithm. This intuition is making me think that perhaps we can apply the sliding window here. So it doesn't cost us much to see if like that's valid. Maybe it'll take 30 seconds just to see if there's a very naive sliding window solution to this. So let's try that. We have our pointers here and here. With the sliding window, we generally want to increase the window as much as we possibly can, like shift that right pointer as much as we possibly can. Now, if we can't shift the right pointer any further, then we shrink the window. We take the left pointer and then shift it. And it can sometimes be in the same position as the right pointer, but the left pointer will never pass the right pointer. So I'll just start drawing these as left and right. Now we're here, this is our window, but this window is not valid. So what should we do? 
because the value zero is less than the value here. Well, the naive sliding window would say, well, take the left pointer and shift it until that's not the case. So then now we're here. And this is fine. Like for this example, it actually will work because now we're going to take our right pointer and shift it by one. We're here. We're going to try this window. It's valid. We're going to try this window. It's valid. This is valid and this is valid. So it works for this example, but it's not always going to be the case. In this example, we can change it very simply. I'm just going to take this uh, five and turn it into a six by uh, drawing over it very badly. But now this is a six. And now our previous naive sliding window, it won't work. We just broke it with this simple example because now this solution will find this as the longest window, but that's not the correct solution. The correct solution is actually this. And so we made a mistake, a bad judgment call when we were back here. When you take the left pointer and shift it to the right, you're basically saying that we cannot create a window bigger than this that starts at this left pointer. The sliding window basically does that. It computes the longest window you can create starting from here, 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 eventually. And when you can't create one from here, then we shift the pointer to the right. And sometimes we don't shift it at all if we're trying to look for like the maximum subarray, which in this case, that's exactly what we're doing. But specifically, when we take this left pointer, we're saying that there is not a value to the right of this that is greater than or equal to that. But that's clearly not the case here. So how would we even determine that? How would we know that there actually is a value to the right of six that is greater than or equal to six? I mean, we could scan through every value to the right of it, but that's just the brute force n squared solution. So instead, how about we do something called pre-processing? The way to eliminate a left candidate is to know what is the max value to the right of that. And if the max value to the right of that, the max is less than this value, then we can safely eliminate this value. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a new array down here. So I have this new array down here. It's called max right. It's going to be the same length as the array up above. We're going to fill it in by just for every value computing the maximum value to the right of it. And if we do that, obviously going left to right, it's going to be n squared. So how about we try doing it right to left? And then we just maintain what the max value is that we've seen so far. So the max value to the right of this, we're actually going to include that value itself. So when we do like the two pointer approach and we want to know like what's the max value to the right of this, we're actually going to be using the right pointer. So it's fine that we include the value itself because from here, we're going to say what's the max value in this whole portion. If it's less than six, well, then this is not a valid subarray. So that's why we would shift the left pointer. But anyway, so this is six. We'll put a six here. This is one. What's the max we've seen so far? It's six. So we'll put a six over here. Same thing over here. Over here, we finally see an eight, a different number that's bigger than six. So we will say eight is the max we've seen so far. And it's also going to be the max here and here. So with these values, I'm going to show you how the solution is going to work. For now, I think it's fine if you just memorize this and just kind of focus on what the solution is, then understand why it works. And once you know that, then try to focus on how you could come up with it yourself in the future. So now starting here with our two pointers, our window is this. We don't care about this window itself. We just want to know, does there exist a window, whether it's this one or maybe further to the right, where this can be the starting point because we're trying to be greedy. We're trying to find the maximum window. So of course we'd start right at the beginning. Ideally, we can create this window. And in this example, we can. So we're gonna see what's the max value at this right pointer. It's eight. That tells us that in here, somewhere in here, there is an eight. So this is a valid subarray. So we can take right minus left. That's going to be one. And that's going to be the max we've seen so far. I'm going to call that the result. And now we're going to take the right pointer and shift it. We're going to do the same thing. Take the value that's at this index. It's eight. That tells us that there is an eight somewhere in here. So thus, there does exist at least a window of this length. Either it's this window itself or maybe there's a bigger window. So it's safe to say that the result is at least going to be two. And then we'll take the right pointer here, do the same thing. Even though this value is less than six, we know that the max value to the right of here, possibly including that value, is a six. And thus, we can say that this window is valid because either it is valid or there is a larger window that's valid. So now we'll update the result to three and just keep going. We're going to get here, same thing. We're going to get here, same thing. So we would get a total of five in this example. Now let's change the example. Let's change it back to what it was. 
I'm just gonna draw over this just to make it quick. Let's assume that that's a five. So now let's populate this. Let's put a five here. And the max we've seen so far here is five, here is five. And then I think this will be eight and these will be eight as well. So quickly going through this example, we'll get the left pointer here, right pointer here. We wanna know if this window is valid. And we don't do that by checking this value. We look at the max value here. So there's an eight here. So that tells us either this is valid or there is another value somewhere over here where we can create a valid window. So we'll set the result to one right now. We'll shift this pointer over here. We're at eight, still valid. So now we'll increment the result to two. Now the right pointer will be shifted over here. I'm gonna clean this up a little bit. Right pointer is over here. We take a look at the max value in this portion of the array, it's five. Five is less than the left value. So now we shift our left pointer. We take the left pointer and we shift it over here. Right pointer is still here and now we kind of do the same check. We compare this value with the max right at this pointer, which is five. This five tells us that there is a five somewhere over here. So zero and five, five is greater than zero, so this is valid. And from here, we just take this right pointer and then shift it here and then eventually shift it, whoops, over here where we would get this window. So that's the intuition behind this algorithm. I know it's not easy to come up with. It's not even easy to understand, but I hope this does make it at least a little bit easier. You can see why this solution would be a linear time algorithm. Again, the key points are with the sliding window. When you shift that left pointer, you want to eliminate that completely. And the only way to do that is to know what's the max value to the right of it. And due to this array, we are gonna need extra space as well. Typically with sliding window, you actually don't need extra space. So this is a very interesting variation of that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is that pre-processing I talked about. I'm gonna create an array called max right. Initially, I'm gonna fill it with all zeros because we know that the smallest value in our input is actually zero. So this is perfectly fine. And I'm going to multiply it by the length of the input array, because in Python, that will create an array of the same size filled with all zeros. Then I want to start iterating through the input in reverse. I'm going to do that like this for n in reversed nums. I believe that just creates an iterator over nums, and then we'll go in reverse order. So I don't think that actually creates extra space, but maybe I'm wrong. And what we want to do is the max value at the last position, let's call that index i, we wanna set it to the max of the current value, n, and whatever the previous max was, which would be max right of i plus one. Now there's a few things wrong here, there's a few issues. One, we don't have like the i pointer, so that's an easy fix. Let's set i equal to, whoops, some all caps, i equal length of nums minus one. So we're starting at the last index. But if we're starting at the last index, i plus one is gonna be out of bounds in that case. There's multiple ways we could deal with this. I'm gonna deal with it just by having a variable, which I'm gonna call the previous max, and initially I'll set it to zero. And then here, we'll replace that with previous max. And then down here, we'll update the previous max every single time to the value that we just populated here. And don't forget to update that pointer i. So let's decrement it by one each time. This is just doing that pre-processing, building max right array. Now for the two pointer or sliding window solution, we're gonna initially set the result to zero. We're gonna return the result and we're gonna try to maximize it. So I'm gonna have one pointer left, it's gonna be zero. I'm gonna have the pointer right, which is gonna go through the length of the input. Every time we want to, update the result by maximizing it. And we're gonna assume our current window is valid. We're gonna add the validation here, but just assume that eventually we validated the window. And so this is the current length of the window, right minus left, and we wanna try to maximize it. So set it to the result of the max of these two. Okay, so now to actually validate the window. How do we know if the window is invalid? Well, while the number at index left is greater than the maximum number to the right of it, so max, right at pointer r while this is the case if they were equal that's actually fine then it's valid but if this is strictly greater than the max value to the right of it well that window is no good we can safely eliminate the left pointer from the solution set so left will be incremented by one so this is the entire solution it doesn't look very complicated but it's definitely harder than it looks I'll run it and you can see that it works. I promise you that it is more efficient than leak code indicates right now. I believe this is the optimal solution in terms of time and space. If you found this helpful or if you're a beginner looking to learn more and improve your problem solving skills, definitely check out Neatcode.io. Whether you just wanna use the free resources or you wanna buy the courses, I genuinely think you'll find it useful.